So in this video, we're going to look at a pretty amazing engine from Subaru, the EJ20. It's been used in a variety of models, power range from about 96 horsepower right up to excesses of 300 horsepower, just depending on the model variant that it was in. So this is a fairly general video. It should just flag up and highlight the mods that should be on your radar if you're just looking to get a little bit more performance out of your EJ20 engine. So the EJ20 is quite a, a standout engine. It's often on the list of people looking for a performance engine to work on. Certainly felt we had to cover the EJ20. Now, most four cylinder engines operate in a conventional setup where the pistons are moving up and down. But in the boxer engine, the pistons are actually moving from side to side. So there's two pistons one side of the car and there's two pistons on the other side of the car. So that creates a rather unique type of engine. They're much more compact and low because you're not forcing against gravity with the up and down motion you're just working in parallel with it there are many would claim performance advantages to having a boxer engine the downsides though can be it's quite hard to work on in a conventional four-cylinder engine if you need to change the injectors or the spark plugs or just get to anything in the engine it's there in the top of the engine but on the boxer engines you've got to go into the side so that requires a little bit of contortion on your part and it can make the engines rather tricky to work on it just depends on what they've been fitted to but the standout feature of the ej20 is the unique sound it makes with the right exhaust it is one of the most distinctive engines out there and it's probably won a lot of support from followers and fans just because of that unique boxer engine note that it produces upgrade options for the ej20 now bear in mind the ej20 was fitted in a wide range of models from a sort of family oriented subaru legacy right up to the performance variants of the subaru in Pretz of the WRX, the STI, and they had a later version which increased capacity to 2.5 litres, and that was labelled as the EJ25. But we're going to deal with that in a separate video, just with a little bit more nuanced advice on parts and objectives you should take into account when tuning the EJ25. So please subscribe to the channel if you're holding out for a, the video on the EJ25. It's something we're working on, and please let us know in the comments your experiences of the EJ25. So, what are the typical mods that you can do to this fantastic engine to max? maximize your enjoyment of it and get the most driving pleasure from it. Well, as with any engine, you want it to burn more fuel and you need to match that fuel with a fairly precise ratio of extra air. So any mods that will increase the air and the fuel supply on the EJ20 will bump up the power. So what are the general power constraints and limitations? Well, it depends on which engine you've got. Generally, if you've got the higher powered turbo variant, you'll get more of a return on your money for the same mods that you would do to the lower powered variant. So the base power has a big bearing on it. Camshaft upgrades are certainly considered by many to be up there with the mods that make the most significant difference. But with any engine that has variable valve timing, you've got to question whether there's much advantage to getting a cam upgrade on it. So you will generally find these stock cams perform quite well up to about 400 horsepower. So for most people, that's where they're aiming. That's the ballpark. They're sort of taking it somewhere between the 300 and 400 horsepower mark. So cams are not an essential. With a performance cam though, you've got to bear in mind that you could make the car more lumpy. So cams tend to bump up the power in the top end of the RPM range and they can create a bit more of a lumpy tick over or lumpy idle in that lower portion of the RPM range, which can make driving in everyday traffic rather tricky or challenging or even positively annoying. So camshaft upgrades will generally make a substantial difference to the engine, but you really want to reserve that as a stage three motorsport style mod where you're trying to extract everything and the cams are starting to create a bit of a restriction or a bit of a problem in your setup. So one thing that can make quite a difference to the way the EJ20 behaves is a lighter flywheel. Now the flywheel is a large mass of metal attached to the side of the engine. Within the clutch area, area of the engine and it stores the kinetic energy from the engine so effectively it slows up transitions in speed if you have a lighter flywheel fitted the revs will increase and decrease more quickly now there is an optimum weight depending on how you're going to be using the car in the competition setting you really want those responses to be quite quick so you can rev match and get into the next gear effectively but when you're driving the car on long cruises and on motorways and highways you want the revs to be held on 
on to so you're not making constant throttle adjustments to maintain a steady momentum. The EJ20 will feel a lot more lively and a lot more sporty with a lighter flywheel. There's a few different options out there to choose from. So I would suggest you chat with people that have your specific version of the EJ20 and what they thought of the lighter flywheel. And please let me know in the comments what your experiences have been with lighter flywheels on the EJ20 engine. So the clutch on the EJ20 will obviously take quite a beating, particularly on those higher powered versions. So when you start tuning them, it's usually the clutch that starts to give up the ghost before other components start to fail. So make sure the clutch is in good condition. And if you are planning on hiking the power and you're looking for a replacement clutch, get a high quality performance clutch. Multiplate clutches have a greater clamping force and can better tolerate higher power figures without giving up on you. So they're certainly good options. But if you go too heavy, the clutch is basically on or off in operation and that can make driving in everyday traffic a bit of a pain. So there is once again a little bit of a balancing act when you start looking to upgrade your EJ20 engine. So when it comes to engine tunes and remaps on the EJ20, you generally see more power gains on the more powerful variants. The ones that have the turbo generally give a lot more power increase than the naturally aspirated variants. But having said that, the lower powered Forester will see around 33 horsepower when mapped, which is certainly not to be sniffed at. But the success you have depends very much on the variant of engine that you've got. The legacy with the EJ23 engine or the EJ203 engine will see around 17 horsepower increase and the EJ205E, the WRX and the STI versions, will see around 30 horsepower more and around 60 newton meters of torque. The EJ20Ks, we see mapping on those or tunes on those, releasing power of about 20 to 40 horsepower, again, depending very much on the variant you've got. So in a lot of cases, people would go to an aftermarket ECU in order to properly adjust the tune on the engine and to extract the maximum amount of power. So we see units from UTEC, Access Ports and EcuTech used to great effect on the EJ20. Let me know in the comments what your experience has been with aftermarket ECUs on the EJ20. But the success you have varies wildly with the different EJ20 engines. And I'm hoping to do some more focused videos on each of the engines just to highlight some of the nuances and the mods that you need to do to extract the best of each of them. But we're gonna try and keep this video as general as possible and just flag up the options that will work best on your EJ20. Don't ever look at just the peak power. You don't just want a blip of power at the top end of the RPM range. You really want an increase in torque. And even those early naturally aspirated engines, you can adjust the torque curve quite dramatically, introducing a lot more power at the lower end of the RPM range. And that makes a significant difference to the drivability of the EJ20. So even if it seems like you're not getting a massive power increase on that headline power figure that's quoted, it will probably still have have a big effect on the drivability of the car and the overall performance that you get from the engine. So one of the most popular mods that we see people doing on the EJ20 is high flow air filters, induction kits, and just replacing the whole air intake. Now on a stock engine where you've not done any other mods, it's questionable whether this makes a significant increase in power. If you measure this on the dyno, you'll typically see about 7% more power. Again, it depends very much on the engine variant you've got. And do let me know in the comments what your experience has been with induction kits kits and intake mods on the EJ20. But these come into their own really where you've added a lot more power. When you start increasing the power, you'll find a restriction in that stock factory intake and that restriction will rob you of power. So freeing up the flow through the intake into the engine can actually release that potential lost power that you get and really make a difference on the tuning project and those headline power figures that you get. So we've spoken about getting air into the EJ20. Getting air out of the EJ20 is just as vital. Now, there's a big debate as to whether you should go with equal length headers or unequal length headers. The key thing there is to optimize the flow. So the velocity and the rate of air coming out of the engines is equal across all cylinders for the maximum effect of that scavenging to fully realize the power potential of the engine. There's quite a few aftermarket exhaust designs out there. It's quite hard to find the one that suits your needs most specifically. A lot of them have got really big bores and what that can actually do is slow up the velocity of air. You 
lose that scavenging effect where each exhaust pulse is creating a vacuum behind it and that helps to empty the cylinders. So that can actually in some cases rob you of a little bit of power if you've just chosen the wrong size exhaust. So generally those headers coming off the engine, because it's a boxer engine, they go quite differently to your conventional engine. And you really do need to think carefully about how these are shaped and formed and how they go into the turbo unit, because that makes a significant difference to the way the turbo spools up and the power gains that you get in your project. So let me know in the comments what your experience has been with the different exhaust configurations, whether you found one that worked particularly well. And if you've had problems fitting an exhaust on your EJ20, let me know in the comments the model of car, the particular version of EJ20 that you've got. And that can flag up the problem to other people out there. And I'm sure some of our other viewers can help you out to diagnose those problems. And we can form a, a consensus as to what the best mods are for each of these EJ20 engines when it comes to exhaust upgrades. Catalysts are typically the restriction in any modern engine, and it's no different on the EJ20. So a high performance, high flowing sports catalyst will remove most of the restriction that you see in the stock exhaust. But I have to say that in some areas, it's illegal to replace the catalyst with a sports cat. And in other areas, you can actually remove the cat completely and have the benefits of a completely free flowing exhaust. But when you actually look at a catless or decatted exhaust, and you compare that with one that has a sports cat on the dyno, you'll see very little difference between them. Those sports cats really have come a long way. And again, like the air intake, you're not looking at a massive restriction on the exhaust that the factory have designed, particularly on those WRX and STI models. They really knew what they were doing when they designed these. So you're just looking to make minor improvements or to free up restrictions that were created after you've added a lot more power to the engine. So how do you add a lot more power to your EJ20? Well, turbo upgrades are obviously the thing that fits the bill. So can you convert the standard naturally aspirated engines into turbocharged engines? Well, you can, but it's a lot of work. They may have the same EJ20 designation, but the overall design, the compression ratios, the parts used in the engine are very, very different. So you would only get away with being able to run a fairly low boost level on those naturally aspirated engines if you went with a turbo. And usually it's more cost effective just to swap in the turbo engine and all the ancillary components, although that is still quite a lot of work. But if you've got the turbo engine, then upgrading the turbo seems to make so much sense. It's quite an expensive upgrade, but it makes such a significant difference to the power and the way the power is delivered. So turbos used on the EJ20, we've seen people using the Borg Warner units on the lower powered variants of this engine. You've got the EFR 7670, the 8374 and the 9180. Bear in mind that bigger turbos tend to have more lag at the bottom end, but make more top end power. So your choice of turbo depends very much on your aspirations and hopes for the car and where you actually want that power to be. Grimspeed and Dorman also make turbos on the Subaru EJ20 engines. So let me know if you've got experience with those and what you think of those. And we've seen the FP Green, the Frank 50 and the SZ49 all making fairly good power. Again, let me know what your thoughts are on those turbo upgrades and suggest any that I've missed out in this video. There's also the TD05H 18Gs and 20Gs. We've heard people saying that the 20Gs spool are almost as quickly as the 18Gs. We've also heard people saying that the 20Gs are about the limit of the stock internals and fuel delivery system on this engine. Most people seem to prefer the 18G variant of that turbo. So 20 PSI of boost seems to be the limit. People start to have issues around about 21 PSI. We do know some people have run 21 PSI and more on standard block but we'd love to hear from you from your experiences on what you've actually managed to get out of a stock block um, with regard to turbo upgrades and I can include these in the more focused videos that are going to be coming out for the EJ20. So if you've increased the turbo there's a lot more air coming into the engine and you may well have a problem with the way the air is metered into the engine the airflow meter the airflow sensors whatever you want to call it they can start to top out if you're just using a stock factory one and there's a lot more air than was expected going into the engine. So it's probably a good opportunity to go out and uprate that airflow sensor. And you obviously need to make an adjustment within the ECU or an aftermarket ECU to take that into account. Otherwise, you're going to start getting errors or the car's going to start running rich or running lean under certain load conditions. So with turbo upgrades, you also need to think about intercooler upgrades. Now, there's probably an argument for intercooler upgrades on the lower powered variants with turbos. The, the general layout of the Subaru Impreza engine puts the intercooler on the 
the top, which is great because it creates a nice short path into the engine. But the cooling effect you get on top of the engine is nowhere near as good as at the front. So I noticed that some of our members and some of our viewers have actually front mounted the intercooler on their EJ20. And that certainly enables better cooling. But there are a lot of other problems. You're adding quite a bit of weight and the Boxer engine configuration is probably not ideal for that. You can understand why the factory have decided to put the intercooler on the top of the engine. But the intercooler cools down the air charge. Now that air charge gains a lot of heat when it goes through the turbo and it's compressed. So that's going to rob you of power. There's another video that we've done that looks at the differences in power of a car without an intercooler or with different intake temperatures. And it can make a substantial difference to your power or your quarter mile time. And the big problem with intercoolers is they tend to warm up. As they get warmer, they start to suffer from something we call heat soak, where they become less effective at cooling down the air charge. So in everyday driving, you tend to put bursts of power into the engine when you overtake things, and then everything gets a chance to cool down. In a competition environment, or if you're a particularly aggressive driver, and I know quite a few of our viewers are, you will notice that that intercooler is starting to get warm and the power starts to decrease as you've started to use that throttle quite enthusiastically over periods of drive. So looking now at the fuel system, you can't just add more air to an engine and expect more power. You need to increase the amount of fuel going into the engine. And the stock fuel system is pretty good on most models. I noticed that some people have had issues with right hand turns under heavy cornering with a little bit of fuel starvation. I've never quite got to the bottom of what the cause of that problem is. So please let me know in the comments if you've got experience on that, if you've been able to sort out that issue. So for most people, you need to uprate the fuel pump, the pickup mechanism as well within the tank and also the injectors if you're looking to make substantial power increases on your EJ20 engine. High flow fuel rails and fuel pressure regulators are also ways of increasing the amount of fuel that goes into the engine and enables much better control, much smoother fuel delivery and that can certainly help your power aspirations. Deech works and injector dynamics both offer decent setups on the EJ20 so please let me know what you think of those and if you've got any other suggestions on fuel system upgrades, drop them in this video so I can include them in the more focused EJ20 videos. We're very much a community based tuning guide. So I love people's feedback. I love to see specs on what people have done to their engine and really sharing that with other people can inspire others to create that perfect project car. And as we all share our knowledge together, we all improve in our knowledge and we improve the performance of all of the cars out there. And we can improve collectively the performance of people that are real enthusiasts and really want to extract the best from their EJ20 engine. So tuned EJ20s can tend to run quite hot. There was an issue on some of them with the cylinder four getting too hot. The cooling is inadequate on most designs on the EJ20 and you can start having problems with rough running, a knocking noise, particularly when the car starts up or when it's warm, if the problem has progressed, you'll notice that knocking noise never really goes away. So the knocking noise is often a symptom of overheating. Now, one way you can help prevent the engine overheating is just uprating the cooling system. So looking at the pump that flows the water around the radiator in the engine block and also the radiator, making sure you've got a decent, efficient radiator set up. And some of the older cars that I've looked at have got really shot radiators. They're like Swiss cheese with all the holes in the cooling fin. So the stock factory one was OK. If it's starting to degrade and it's full of holes, it's going to be woefully inadequate at taking the hot temperatures out of your engine. So I really hope this has been useful to you. As I said at the beginning, this is just an overview of the EJ20. There's lots of different versions of the EJ20. So I really, in fairness, need to do very detailed videos on each of the EJ20 engines and what the best upgrades and mods are. So to do that, I really need your help and your feedback. So please fire up those comments. Let me know what your experience has been and specifically which engine you've got so that we can start to build these ultimate tuning guides with your help. So thanks for watching. Please boot that like button because that really does help us to get out there. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so because we would love you to stay tuned. And I've lined this video up for you that you should find really interesting. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.